Hi, Jaden. Um, oh, about, there's Frank, too. We're about to leave for the vigil for you. I just printed out a butt ton of pictures for you all day long. One so. metric butt ton. <laughs> I've been working really hard all day. This is the video that we're taking for the vigil so that everybody can tell you how much they love you. Took these off my wall, including this one that you just love. <laughs> we love you so much, Jaden. All right. On that note, we're going to... We will see you at the vigil. Yes, we'll see you there. Okay. We love you. Jaden, there are also 
some small cards that you can write that will be delivered to him, as well as a collaborative art project at the back. So uh, you're all welcome to stay here as long as you like, as long as we shut it down at 10 o'clock, and then we'll be, uh, I would be really, really happy for some help putting the chairs back. And uh, Nick or Cheyenne or Trinity can help direct you where to do that. So with no further ado, um, would you like to say something? Okay. Hi everyone, um, I'm Nicholas Austin, for most people that don't know. Uh, I wasn't necessarily the best of friends with Jamie, but I know probably more than anyone how painful an event like this can be. My own boyfriend in December tried to take his life. And so when I heard this news about Jaden, it hit me incredibly hard, and I felt totally helpless. And the only thought that I had was I needed to do something to show him that we all cared. And no matter who he loves or what he believes, there's no reason that we shouldn't love him. And I want everyone to know that this isn't, this is for Jaden. This isn't a political movement. I want everyone to be respectful of his family and just to understand the severity of the situation. As Jesse mentioned, after the orations that are going to take place, there are cards on the back table that if you want to write a personal message to Jaden to let him know that you're thinking about him, uh, then I would be very happy to read the, or to take those and give them to his uncle who is going to take them uh, to him. So during the oration, I ask that you guys be quiet. And after everyone's done, if uh, you would like to come up and light a candle, you're more than welcome. Uh, so I'm going to give the floor to his uncle. I think I hope that everybody can hear me. I'm going to try to do this without the microphone. Can everybody hear me? Yeah. I right, just going to be tough on me. So bear with me. Maybe I will have to use it because it's going to go down. Before leaving the house, I got a call from Jaden's mother. Father, both. One was calling, and the other I was talking to one, and the other one was calling me. And unfortunately, it wasn't with the good news that I've been getting. And I thought I'd start that. He's, he's still with us, but they don't give him very good odds. I have to say that. It kills him. Yeah, I'm going to try and pull every bit of strength I can out to finish this talk. Just, I, I wrote a little, just a little bit of information that I could come up with about a, a couple hours ago. And I'd like to share it with you guys. Jane was delivered to us on June 4th, 1997. Bear with me. As a beautiful baby boy. Lola had waited a long time to have her first child. That you have to know. God, I'm going to share this with you. Lowell went to school with my little sister here, Billy. This is a mom here. In high school, as I was going to the same high school. And we've known them for 44 years, 45 years. Lola. Uh, and we really aren't brother and sister, but she is our sister. It's just one of those things that's understood, okay? Lola had, Lola had a long wait, a long time, waited a long time to have her first child. He had lots of family around to love him. I remember in some of the early years, when he was about five, a lot of discussions as, as to if we thought he would be gay because of a lot of his feminine behaviors, wanting to play with dolls rather than trucks, dressing in his mom's clothes, 
And I tried at the time to tell them I didn't think that because our kid, my wife, my lovely wife, 37 years. I tried to tell them that our kids did the same thing. It's just natural for kids to do things like this. I, you know, we just fought that off. Our love for him never wavered, as he was still our son, nephew, brother, grandson, or friend. Okay? No matter what, it, it never did. He has a lot of friends that stand by his side, I know that. Devin sitting up here with us has, has befriended Jaden. And we appreciate this young lady for, for the support she's given him. She's wonderful. He tried a lot of sports through the years, but he never found one that he was content playing. He did soccer, wrestling, baseball. I even got out and tried to help coach him a little bit in baseball, as I did my kids. And he just, he wasn't there. But we tried. He finally found something that he was comfortable with. Cheerleading. And I haven't seen him, but I've been told that he was great at it. Go, Jaden. I love the boy. He enjoys, he enjoys playing the piano, or at least he did. He took piano lessons. He enjoyed it while he was doing it. I don't know that he still does it. He enjoys music, the outdoors, picking mushrooms and huckleberries with the family. He truly seemed comfortable with himself, always. He told his mother and father that he was gay about a year ago. And it really came out as no shock to most of us. And our feelings never changed. They never have. He's still our nephew, grandson, son, whatever it is. There's, it, it meant nothing to us. He's still a lovely boy, lovely young man. A lot of bullying had started at school, and the pressures were overwhelming. Jaden. I've been taking a, talking to an awful lot of people that have mentioned the amount of bullying that goes on, not just at the high school, but the middle school and the grade school. Something truly, and this is me speaking, and I have to say it, something truly needs to be done about the ed educating of our young children about bullying. It should not have come to something like this for it to get started. My sister called me, my older sister, who lives in bed, called me the day, at, the day after it happened, wishing me good luck for my 49ers. I'm a 49er fan. My wife and I have been for years. Wishing us good luck. At that time, I had to tell her the news about Jaden. And it was heart wrenching to her. She called me back. I think Monday morning, Sunday afternoon, telling me that, but I think you need to do something. She said, I think you need to be a voice for this bullying. And I told her sister, I've already been thinking about it, and I thank you for your confidence. She said, I. She felt, like I do, that I could be a good voice for this, to try to get some education done in our schools. I'm going to. I'm going to be a strong voice. And I talk, when I talk to his, Jaden's father, Joe, tonight, he thanked me tremendously and told me that he would love to help me out in, my, in this venture. I will get something done. I will. You have to trust me. It's painful. There are a lot of resources out there, 
and I hope to find them and help. If I have to, in educating our children in the horrible outcomes related to bullying. I I ask I, I, I'm very thankful for all of you to show up and show this bit of support for my nephew, our nephew, not just mine, your friends, whatever whatever capacity he is to you. I truly from the bottom of my heart, thank you for showing our family the support. Thank you. Okay. Do I need this? Right here. Is that better? I'm Dana Thomas. Um, Jayden has a name in our house. It's a son from another mother. I know a lot of the parents feel that way about Jayden. Everybody's friend and I really wanted to take this opportunity. Wow, it's really hard to talk up here. Um, hindsight. I want to talk to you guys about hindsight. I hear it all day, every day. If only I had. I wish I had. You can't do that. I know a lot of us are thinking, I wish I would have talked to him. I wish I would have had him over to my house. But that's a killer. You can't have hindsight. That's bad. Um, my daughter, Trinity, highlighted a quote here. I don't have my glasses and it's dark, so pardon me. This is a little tiny verse, very small, that made her think of Jaden. Oh, I totally can't see it. Therefore, do not worry about tomorrow, for tomorrow will worry about itself. Each day has enough trouble of its own. I do encourage you guys. Honestly, if somebody questions someone in the locker, if they're saying, you know, calling somebody a name, don't walk away and go, oh gosh, I don't want to say anything. I don't want to be in the ball. Say, hey, what are you doing? Cut that out. I hear people, well, I'm scared. I don't want to, I don't want to be that person. Be that person. How many of us are there? Look at all of us. That one guy, really? Say something. Please. That's all I got. Thank you for coming tonight. Such an amazing guy I've ever known. He knew how to brighten up someone's day when they were down.
Anytime you say something that makes him smile, his eyes just light up. You could walk in a room and you just brighten your day, saying about how his day went and he'd think of the little things, even if everything bad happened, he would just go, well, someone said something really funny, so it just made my day. <laughs> and he did so easy for finding the good things. Just, just being I'm Devin. Um, I share a room with Jaden. And um, I would like to continue on from what Trinity was saying about talking about Jaden and about how great he is. Um, I remember one time Jaden told me that all he needs for a good day is some gel toothpaste and a good hair day. <laughs> and I know that that morning he had not taken a shower and not brushed his teeth, so he was just automatically off for a bad day. Um, but me and him love to watch Bones together, even though I have never seen an episode in my life, but he would always fill me in on what was going on and tell me for as long as the episode was going on, and I was still confused, but he would still tell me. He would sing me Lana Del Rey songs, even though I only know one of her songs. And I just loved waking up next to him and just being able to look over across the room. And he would be waking up too, and he would just always be like, hey. Just like, <laughs> and we would always just get me coffee together. I would always just start my day out with Jaden. Just the last two months of my life have just completely been full of Jaden. And now I don't know exactly what to do if I ever have to wake up one morning and he's not going to be there with me to make coffee with me or sing me Lana Del Rey or talk about bones because I've just gotten so accustomed to how Jaden is. And like everybody keeps on saying, he's a day brightener, and I think we all just need to focus on that. About how if everybody was like Jaden, this wouldn't happen. Because I know for a fact, if I talked to Jaden one morning, if I wanted to do this to myself, Jaden would completely change my mind. But there was no one there for Jaden that was like Jaden. So I think we all just need to be more. I met Joey. Lola was 40 years old when she had Jane, and he was a miracle. She wanted him. She wanted children so badly, and and he was a little miracle. And he knew. He knows he's loved. I um, I know that Darla Sunderman had a safe room in the high school, and she protected kids, gay kids, and kids that were being bullied. Jaden had begged his parents to be homeschooled because he was being so harassed in school. I know he, I know he, he's loved. He's loved by all of us, and I want to thank everybody for showing up. And he's in God's hands, and, and I do believe in miracles because Jaden is a miracle. I remember the day that my aunt came out and said that she was pregnant with Jaden. I was there when Jaden was born. I was there to change Jaden's diaper. And I got to see him grow up. And when he 
remaining person. That's all I can say. Getting in the same go through hell. And we're recovering at it. But the one thing that I'm like, yeah, I'm okay right now is Jada about to see me straighten up my life too. And um, I don't know, Jada was there for me through the same thing. And, uh, and so, Mom, do you ever wish you were somebody else? And I said, yeah, uh -huh, I do. I think everybody wishes that sometimes. There's that one thing about them that they would change if they could. And um, it just hurt me that my son was saying that. And I said, um, you know, whenever I think about that, it's other people that don't know me that make me feel that way. It's other people that don't know you that make you want to change something about yourself. And that is what I told my son as I remembered being an adolescent and all of those <coughs> horrible things that happen to you when you're an adolescent. Um, to hate the way that you are because of somebody that doesn't know you, because of what they say about you, is to say that those people, like the people in this room that care about you and love you so much, that their opinion doesn't count. And I don't think we ever really think about that when we're um, hating on ourselves. And uh, I also was thinking about how um, how Rumi wrote that the wound is the place that the light enters through. And I think that is so true tonight when I look at um, small towns when people talk and people say things that hurt you and it gets around to you at the same time when someone really is hurt like in this situation um look at all the light that is pouring in and i would really like this night to end on that sort of a note that there's so much light filling this room i can feel it and it's a really sad night and i hope that you will come back next weekend when we're having a celebration and a dance party and bring that light and we can just collect it up into one big giant ball of happiness and send it Jaden's way. Um, but for tonight, I believe that, is Betty not here? Yeah, I'm here. Huh? Who do you want? Betty wanted to speak, and you did. Okay. I didn't speak, but I think my sister wanted to say something. Okay. Okay. But we need prayer. We need, you, you want a prayer? We do need some prayer. Okay. So, um, I'm doing it time. I'm going to ask that everyone except for the family record a greeting to Jaden if they want to and do the cards and the and the art project in the back before you leave and um, so we'll have a few minutes and when you're ready just you can't do it. Okay. Is there someone else that would like to come up and leave a prayer? Um, I just only wanted to say, um, I, I didn't know Jada, I just a mom. I'm just someone who walks the halls of high school and sees all these amazing kids around and I'm just, my heart's breaking for you tonight, but more importantly, I just want you to know that you're comforted by God who loves you. And despite the ugliness around, He is still God. And we just want to lift up the family tonight. So can we just bow our heads and just pray tonight? God will come tonight, Lord. And we just put Jaden in your hands, Father. We know that you are in total control, God. And we just pray uh, from his body, Lord, that you would just heal him, Father. And we uh, put our trust in you. And we lift up the things, so Lord, that there be no your touch tonight. God, that you would just comfort them in the way that you can. Lord, be a light in this really good time. Lord, and you just cover this whole group tonight, Lord, as they um, go about their day. And let's not forget about him, Jaden, and just remember him for who he was. Lord, we thank you. We thank you for Jaden, who he is, and to these lives of these people that are here tonight. We just thank you so much for your love. And we just ask for your blessing. In your precious name, amen.